Greetings, friends, and good morning. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean. The website can be found at scriptureandprophecy.com. That's where you go to find the archives, and that's where you go to support this mission of truth. You know, I say it all the time, but I can't possibly say it enough. Uh, to do this, this work uh, is my great privilege, and uh, I'm honored to be able to do it. And I'm so grateful and thankful uh, that God brought me to this. And uh, I mean, there's nothing better than you get to read the word and people actually listen and people's lives can actually be transformed. And so I'm very, very thankful to have this opportunity. And uh, I thank all of you for providing me the opportunity. While you may be blessed and benefit from the work, uh, I couldn't do it without your help and your support and your prayers. And so I just want to reiterate that and just say thank you for for joining me uh, week after week for these readings and for these studies and these conversations today like every week uh, we are looking for some wisdom and some encouragement we're actually going to finish the book of psalms today i think we've been i think i've been working through this for like two years so we're going to read one we're going to read psalm 147 148 149 and 150 sounds like a lot but it's actually not they're fairly short 149 and 150 are only like six to eight verses and so we're going to read through those and then we'll read proverbs chapter seven now what's interesting about proverbs well i'll talk about proverbs chapter seven when we get there let's read our psalms for this morning open up your hearts See if there's something here this morning that God might want to speak to you and say to you. If there's some wisdom here for you, some encouragement here for you, maybe some correction. But open up your hearts and let's listen to the Word of God. Psalm 147 Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praises calmly. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcast of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart, and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars, and he calleth them by their names. Great is our Lord, and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifteth up the meek. He casteth the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving, sing praise upon the harp unto our God, who covereth the heaven with the clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh grass to grow upon mountains. He giveth to the beast his food, and the young ravens which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse, he taketh not pleasure in the legs of man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, and those that hope in his mercy. Please note, let's just stop there real quick. These are This is easy to overlook and easy to not take in and, and really dwell on and chew on. Verse 10 says, He delighteth not in the strength of the horse, he taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. In other words, the abilities and the strength of men, he's not impressed by that. He's not impressed by their status, by their power, by their financial portfolio. What God takes pleasure in is two things that's listed here. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him. Right? God loves those who fear him. Because the people who fear him are wise. They understand his power, his magnitude, his holiness. And... And those that hope in his mercy. I don't know about you, but every day I have to put my hope in God's mercy, for which I do not deserve. The Bible says his mercies are new every morning. It's one of the things I'm most grateful for in all of existence is that God's mercies are new every morning because there's not a day that goes by that I don't disappoint myself and that I feel like I don't disappoint God. So I come before the throne every morning and say I'm so thankful that your mercies are new every morning these this is what God takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his mercy I'm reminded by the psalm or by the song rather the hymn 
My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. That's where our hope needs to lie. Let's continue. Verse 12. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of thy gates. He hath blessed thy children within thee. He maketh peace in thy borders and filleth thee with the finest of wheat. He sendeth forth his commandments upon the earth. His word runneth very swiftly. He giveth snow like wool. He scattereth the hour frost like ashes. He casteth forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sendeth out his word and melteth them. He causeth his wind to blow and the waters to flow. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as far as judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. And we got three more psalms here to read. They're all real short, all three of them. I'm just going to go through all three. Psalm 148. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him from the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his host. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, you heavens of heavens, and ye waters that are above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He hath also established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons, and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind, fulfilling his words, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all people, princes, and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens and old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalteth, exalteth the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. Psalm 149. Praise ye, Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praises in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance and let them sing praises unto him with a timbrel and a harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will, be beautif he will beautify the meek with salvation. Please note, that's a beautiful line. Let's read that again. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and the punishment upon the people to bind their kings with chains and the nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, This honor have all the saints, praise ye the Lord. Six more verses, Psalm 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. And that is the Psalms. We've worked through all of it. Uh, most likely, we'll just start back over uh, with Psalm 1 next week. Uh, because I just think it's important um, to just have that weekly dose to start the week. And uh, I'm sure many of you would agree. Let's wrap things up with Proverbs chapter 7. Now, 
Last week we read Proverbs chapter 6, which dealt with Solomon warning his sons against strange women, right? The dangers of the fornication and sexual immorality and how you uh, allow the strange woman to draw you away is going to take you into the depths. Well, chapter, or, yeah, chapter 7 here, Proverbs chapter 7, is nothing but that. <laughs> it's just a reiteration of that conversation, yet with even more warning, this is a serious issue for Solomon, and he's obviously very concerned about his sons because he's been down this road, and he knows. In fact, the very last verse says, when you're talking about the strange woman, verse 27, it says, Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. He's saying if you go after a strange woman, if you seek after the lust of the flesh, you're going after fornication, you're going after sexual immorality, as opposed to God's design, which is you take a wife, right? And she is your pleasure. Going after strange women, women who are not your wife, that leads to the pits. And there's so many troubles and dangers that, that are associated with that. And he's terrified for his sons, obviously, because this point is beat to death over and over and over. So let's read chapter 7. Proverbs. Verse 1. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thy heart. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement, and beheld among the simple ones I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding, passing through the streets near her corner. And he went the way to her house. In the twilight of the evening, in the black of the dark night, and behold, there met him a woman, with the attire of a harlot, and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn, her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait in every corner. Please just note for a second. We live in a society, and by the way, this isn't just uh, a man's problem anymore. Uh, when you look at the statistics, there's just as many women looking at pornography, struggling with sexual immorality as men. So this is really to all of us. But one thing I've noticed as a young man, well, I guess I'm not that young anymore, 40 years old this year, uh, but young enough to still notice attractive women. I'll put it that way. Wherever you go, the, tempta the temptation to lust is around every corner. And any man knows this. We live in a society where you can't drive down the road without a billboard crying out to you for attention. I wrote about this in one of my books. I don't know if it was the 30-day devotional book or if it's the faith and obedience book. I can't remember which one it's in, but I wrote about this very topic. And how it's always that you've got to be on guard especially in today's culture where sexual immorality is so prevalent and accepted that you see things that you never would have saw 30 years ago just by going to Target, right? You just, you're just walking into a department store and the temptations are, to, to, the temptation to lust and be drawn away is everywhere. And of course, the internet, the TV, social media, everything is riddled with it. You have to be on constant guard against this, especially if you're someone uh, who's vulnerable to this type of temptation. What does Solomon say? He's talking about the strange woman, but really it's just a euphemism for, for lust, for temptation. He says, now is she without, now in the streets and lieth in wait in every corner. He's warning his sons, it's everywhere. You've got to be on guard. 
Nothing new under the sun. Amen. Verse 13. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I played my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry and carved works with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. Do you see the do you see what he's warning against? This is very graphic. It's almost like it's a picture of a woman who's saying my husband's out of town. Verse 21, with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straight away as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. Till the dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that this is for his life. Do you hear the severity? that Solomon is warning his sons of. He's like, it's like an ox going to the slaughter. It's like a dart to the liver. You don't know that this is for your life. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thy heart decline to her ways. Go not astray to her paths, for she hath cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Could there be a more graphic and a more severe warning about this? The Bible is not silent on, silent on this issue. So all these things that men struggle with, and women, but this specific psalm is addressed to Solomon's sons. It's not that the word of God has not given you direction. Remember that. This is one of the most severe and graphic warnings that you could receive. He's warning, hey, this, you, the Bible is acknowledging, God is acknowledging that this problem exists, that this is out there, that you're going to encounter this. But he's saying, if you fall to it, if you let it, if you let it draw you away, it's like an ox going to the slaughter. Many strong men have been murdered by this, is what he's saying. The path leads to hell. Avoid it like the plague. Strong words. Strong conversation for this morning. But hey, this isn't Mike. This isn't me. I didn't say all this. I'm just reading you the word of God. So don't be upset at Sean. Take it up with the Lord if you don't like what this word says. This is God's word. His warnings, His instructions to us. Thank you for listening this morning. I pray that you've been blessed, strengthened, encouraged, challenged. I hope your hearts have been pierced. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless.